Hey, I'm Steve Gabriel, and I'm thrilled that we have this time together. I pray that God would help you to understand how great He is and how great His plan is for your life. Come on, let's enjoy God together. We're going to continue with our series now, Letters from John. I'm going to dive into 2 John in just a moment. But I just want to say, if you're watching this on catch up and maybe you haven't seen the first uh, two parts of this, I want to encourage you to go back and watch those with Pastor Steve so you can get caught up. But today we're going to dig into Second John. Before I read it, uh, and we're going to read it all together, before I do that, I want to share with you an experience that I had a number of years ago. The reason I want to tell you this story is because I think it creates a great picture that is kind of echoed by what we are about to read. So let me just uh, tell you about this. A a good few years ago, I had an amazing opportunity to learn to sail. Yes, sailing boats. And um, I I had to do a sort of course in the classroom where I learned all about it. And then we went out on different sort of trips for a, a day or a few days, sometimes even a week at a time to learn all about how to skipper a boat. Now, I know you have this beautiful picture now, don't you, of me sort of cruising around the the Caribbean or the Mediterranean well it wasn't like that at all because we were actually learning in the North Sea and it was really really cold so not quite what we had in mind but it was still an amazing experience and we'd actually just sailed a board up to Edinburgh uh, for the tall ships race and we'd come back and we were in charge of a 36 foot yacht and we had a small crew and our skipper that was doing the training at the time decided that he had a great idea You see, just outside the harbour, some boys had been set up, and these were racing boys. They basically marked a course out in the sea that in a few days' time, other boats were going to come and compete and and race around them. So our skipper thought, well, this is a great opportunity to, to learn a bit of racing and how to quickly change direction and do all those things. So he said on Friday, let's, let's go out and let's do that. The, the problem with this, what made it a little bit... We were a little bit apprehensive, I'm not going to lie, is that the weather was not good. And when I say not good, I'm talking a force seven storm. I mean, the waves were huge. The wind was terrible. The rain was pelting down. I was not sure that this was a good idea, but my skipper was like, no, it will be good for you. Let's do it. So we headed out. Now, the waves looked bad from a distance, but when you were in them, they looked even worse. The boat started to feel smaller and smaller because of the size of the waves. Because of the wind and the way we were racing around these boys, the boat spent most of its time pretty much on its side and the waves were so big that we were crashing over both sides. We were wearing full waterproofs but we were soaked through because the rain was banging down, the, 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 the winds and the waves. We were just getting absolutely pelted. And it was pretty, I'm not going to lie, I was scared. It was pretty scary stuff. But I remember in that moment looking back at our skipper who was at the helm and he was just calm. He was just absolutely steady. And I was reminded as I thought about that of Jesus in the boat. We read that account that the storm whipped up around the disciples in the boat and Jesus was just asleep in the boat. (laughs) This reminded me that sometimes in life, you know, storms come and right now we are in the middle of a storm. As, as we're recording this today, we're, we're in the middle of a, a pandemic and we're just talking about now the second wave of this pandemic hitting. The, the, the world is a pretty stormy place right now. And as I thought about our skipper, and as I think about Jesus in the boat, I, I remember looking back at the skipper and thinking, wow, he's, he's just so unshaken by all that seems to be happening around him. And there's two reasons, I think, why he was not, why he was okay with it all. The first one was this, was he'd been there before. He had every confidence. He, he'd seen storms before. He'd had these experiences before. And he knew how it was going to finish. He knew that we were actually safe and it was going to be okay. The second reason that gave him confidence was that every member of the crew on that boat was wearing a harness and our harnesses were clipped to the boat. So no matter how bad that storm got, no matter how big the waves got, we weren't going to come off the boat because we were actually anchored onto the boat itself. And as I think about that story and I was reading 2 John, I think there's some 
something in our lives that John wants to refer to here that is actually that anchor in our lives that we need to be clipped on to get through the storms that, that come sometimes unwelcome into our world. We didn't ask for the storm, but it's there. And when we get in it, it looks sometimes even scarier than it does from a distance. But we have to make sure because God knows where we're going. God's not shaken by what's happening in the world around us, but we have to make sure that we are clipped on, that we're not just holding on, but we are anchored onto the boat. And I believe the thing that we are supposed to anchor to is truth. Where we are supposed to connect ourselves is to the truth of the Word of God, is to the truth of Jesus. And that is the big theme that runs through Second John. And we're going to read it together in a moment. And I think this, was a, a, a me- this message to the church was because truth is under attack. Truth was under attack then, and it's under attack today. And as John writes this to the church, he's reminding them, hold on to the truth, anchor yourself on, stay connected to the truth. So let's read it together and let's have that in mind as we read it. It says this, The elder, to the lady chosen by God and to her children whom I love in the truth. And not not I only, but also who know the truth. Because of the truth which lives in us and will be with us forever. Grace and mercy and peace from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father's Son will be with us in truth and love. It has given me great joy to find some of your children walking in the truth just as the Father commanded. And now, dear lady, I am not writing you a new command, but one we have heard from the beginning. I ask that we love one another and in this love that we walk in obedience to his commands as you have heard from the beginning. His command is that you walk in love. I say this because many deceivers who do not acknowledge that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh have gone out into the world. Any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch out that you do not lose what we have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring his teaching, this teaching, do not take him into your house. Or welcome them. Anyone who welcomes them shares in their wicked work. I have much to write to you, but I do not want to use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to visit you and talk with you face to face so that our joy may be complete. The children of your sister, who is chosen by God, send their greetings. It's a pretty strong message from John saying, hold on to the truth. There's people out there that are trying to deceive and trying to distort and trying to lead you astray away from the truth. And I would say the same is very similar today. There's, a, the, the, there's so much fake news. There's so much misinformation. There's so much noise happening in the media that today is spreading so much fear. Even conspiracy theories that people are buying into, there is so much noise that is going on out there. And I want to ask you this, what are you feeding yourself with? What are you watching? What are you listening to? What is feeding you? Because truly that is what is discipling you. (laughs) If that is what you're listening to, that is informing your point of view. If you are listening to the news more than you're listening to God, I I wonder, have we somehow got this out out of context? We've got to press in to God's truth. The thing is that truth is also under attack because there's so many conversations today about truth being relative. Well, your truth is your truth and, you know, you do what you believe and I'll do what I believe. No, no, no. I want to submit to you today that the Bible teaches us there is one truth and that is God's truth. God is truth. And the thing is the enemy wants to rob you of that. He wants to lead you somewhere else. He wants you to unclip from that truth. He wants you to listen to the noise. He wants you to listen to the speculation. He wants you to listen to the fake news. He wants you to be unsettled. Because he wants you to unclip from that boat so when the storm hits, you get washed away. And the start point for the enemy is always to question the truth of God. If we think back into Genesis right in the beginning when Adam and Eve and they had that, the fruit, the serpent said, you know, did, did God really say that you shouldn't eat it? That, did, did he really say that? And that's what the enemy will do. He will cause us to question God's truth and we've just got to be so aware that we've got to stay connected to the truth of God. We've got to hang on to that above all other things and make sure we are connected to it. Why? Because on the other side of us is something amazing. Listen to this, John 8, 32 
says this, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. When we stay connected to God's truth, that's, that means we actually find freedom because we don't get washed away. We get, we get to go towards the best that he is for us. We get to live in his peace. We get to live in his joy. We get to live in his fullness. And the enemy, you see, he, this, this is the thing that we need to understand. I don't want to give him too much airtime, but it's important that we understand the battle that we are in. The enemy is sneaky. The enemy is not just going to suggest something to you that you think, well, that's clearly outrageously wrong. You know, hey, I think you should rob a bank today. Well, I think we all know that that's not a good idea. That's illegal. It's a bad thing to do. We recognize that as a, as a sinful idea, as, as a bad idea. But what the enemy wants to do is just, just suggest something. Just be subtle. Just lead us away a little bit. You know, the best, the, the most successful con artists are those that when you've, They've conned somebody that person doesn't know. That, that's the whole point. When you, you're deceived, yeah, the, the word deceived means that you are living in a reality that's not true. And that's what the enemy is trying to do to us. He's trying to just move us away a little bit, just a little bit, just a little lie, just so a little attitude or a little thought. And we have to be so, so careful. Why? Because when that happens, we get attached, we get hooked on to the wrong thing. And the problem is then that when the storm comes, we get thrown from the boat because sometimes we, we may think that we're hooked on, but if we're deceived by the enemy and that's, remember, he's the father of lies. He is the deceiver. This is what he does. He's very, very good at it. He's very subtle, but he's very, very good at it. When that storm comes, we may think, hey, yeah, I'm secure in God. But then when the storm comes, we realize, oh, I wasn't secure in God. My security was in I don't know, maybe my finances or my job or my career or my family or that relationship. And so getting back to the truth of God is so important because that is what is going to keep us unshaken in these times. And so I just want to talk really practically for, I want to give you two thoughts of how do we hold on to God's truth at times like this and throughout our life. I want to suggest two ways. We need to continue to seek and protect God's truth. Continue to seek and protect God's truth. Right at the start of 2 John, it says this, but all who know the truth. That word know is a really interesting word because when you expand that and we read it from the amplified version, it says this, to progressively, this is the word know, progressively learning to recognize, know and understand the truth. It's more than just knowing it, but it's progressively growing continuously in that understanding, knowing to identify and understand, ah, hang on a minute, I recognize that's the truth. This isn't the truth. To know it, to know it, to really, really know it. You know, you can know something and then you can really know something. And sometimes we have to experience things in life and you know something in God and then you go through something, but then now I really know it. Let me, let me explain it to you like this. You know Pastor Steve Gamble, our lead pastor. I know Pastor Steve Gamble. You know him, but I've worked with him for 20 years as a, and a, as a friend and as my pastor. You know that he's a great man of God. I know he's a great man of God to a deeper level because, as I say, I've been in his world for 20 years and I've seen some of the struggles and some, I've seen and journeyed life with him. I know it probably to a deeper level than you do because I just know him better than you do. When you journey things with God, there's a level of knowing, but then there's progressively, no, but now I really know. And that's the journey that we're on to continually press into God to seek out his truth and really know it deep down inside. So how do we do that? Here's some really practical ways. First one, and you're probably already ahead of me because it is so obvious. The first one is this, the Bible. This is God's word. This, uh, this, this is full of God's promises to you and to me. It's so important that we dig in to the word. And I don't know whether you've whether you're used to reading the Bible, maybe it's something fairly new to you. I want to encourage you, build a momentum in the word. Don't just dip in and out and think, well, I don't really know what I read today. No, this, it's, this is your daily bread. I once heard somebody describe it like this. They said, you may not remember what you had for breakfast four days ago, but you remember that it did you good, that it fueled you. 
And that's the same reading our word, reading the Bible. You may not remember everything that you read, but you know it's doing you good. It's feeding your life. Build up a momentum in the word. And that's why we've been studying this idea of SOAP, S-O-A-P, scripture, that we read a scripture or observation that we look at. What does this scripture contain? What is it telling me? What's the context that it's written in? Then we move on to A, application, and we go, wow, how does that apply to my life today? How can that impact the way I live out my life today? And then P, prayer, we give it over to God. So important. I want to encourage you, just press on into the Word of God. There's nothing like the Word of God. The second point on this is, is kind of tied with that. And I, I want to remind you that the Holy Spirit is with you. He is your helper. He is your guide. He is your counselor. And I love this. Let me read this to you from John 16, verse 13. It says, when he, the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit. So here's a name given to the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. When he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. Wow. The Holy Spirit is your guide to help you seek out that truth, find that truth and steer away through. I want to encourage you, inquire of the Holy Spirit. Talk to God. Ask for help. Ask for understanding. When we go through situations, and that's why, you know, we've got to remember there's facts of things and realities that are happening in our world, but there is a truth that is beyond those things. There's things happening that we might not agree with or that trouble us, but we've got to seek God and go, God, I know there's a truth that is higher, that you are still in control, that you reign. Maybe, for example, you know, you've You've lost a job over this pandemic time, or maybe you've struggled with your mental health. But the truth is, God is your provider. The truth is that he has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. It might not feel like it right now, but that is the truth that we've got to cling to through these times, and the Holy Spirit helps us to do that. You know, the Bible teaches us that we must seek first his kingdom. We're seeking his rule, his reign. He is our king. He is in control. Let's go after that and hold on to that. As we seek the truth, I want to then encourage us that we also need to protect the truth. It says this in Second John in verse 8, watch out that you do not lose what you have worked for. It's an interesting warning because Why is that warning there if that wasn't something that we were likely to do? It's easy to lose what we've already worked for. In other words, to to lose the ground that we've already taken. And how do we prepare for that? How do we look out for that? We've got to stay vigilant. We've got to stay on the lookout in our own lives. That's why the Bible teaches us things like to hold every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Let Let me put it this way and ask you this. Does your thinking line up with God's word? Do you, do you analyze what, what do I think about? And is this true of God? I've, are my thoughts about how God loves me and how he's strengthened me and all that he's given me? Or do I have thoughts that are outside of those? I want to encourage you something that I do helps me with this is I journal. Sometimes in my prayer times with God, I, I write things down of how I'm thinking and how I'm feeling. And then I stand back and I sort of look at those and, and I speak the truth over the word of God because we don't always feel like it. And it's good to be honest before God, but then we declare truth over it and we go back to the understanding of who God is and who we are in him. It's, we've got to hold our attitudes before God. You know, Psalm 139, we've read it before. It says, search me, O God. You know, find any offensive ways in me. Do we hold our attitudes out before God and say, God, lead me, correct me by the power of your Holy Spirit. Help me find those attitudes that are not of you. They might be attitudes towards our family or finance or even racial equality. They could be absolutely anything, but just holding them out before God, saying, God, search me and know me. Help me find those things in my life. But it's really important that we not only seek the truth and that we protect the truth in ourselves, but I believe we also have a responsibility to protect that truth in those around us. That we hold each other to account. Sometimes that requires some difficult conversations, and I don't mean in a judgmental way. You know, it says in in the book of John that Jesus came full of truth and full of of grace. We need to have grace. And here in 2 John, we've we've just read about how we need to do everything in love. But sometimes we've got to 
have those difficult conversations. We've got to press in with one, and the, one another. We've got to fight for each other. We don't want anybody slipping off into the water because they've let go of the truth. And that's why life groups are so important. If you're not part of a life group, I want to encourage you, get in a life group. Why? Because there you find friendship and you find people that are going to help lead you in truth. And I think so often we can be, it's really easy to do the gracious part, but sometimes it's difficult to bring the truth. And I think we need to stand for one another. We need to encourage one another in the truth. We need to support one another in the truth. We need to help one another and guide each other in the truth of the Word of God, especially in the times that we're in. So let's continue to seek God's truth together, to protect God's truth in our lives, to not lose ground that we've already taken. And as a finish, I just want to remind you that picture of, of the skipper in the boat. And I remember, I still remember turning around and looking at him, just so unmoved by all that's happening, by the storm and the, the wind and the waves are raging. And he's just absolutely confident in what's going on. And as I said, it makes me think about Jesus in the boat, who was asleep in the boat. And here's my, my challenge for you today. So often when we read accounts of Jesus and we read about the disciples, we liken ourselves to the disciples. But the Bible's teaching is clear. We are supposed to become more and more like Jesus. And here's the challenge. Could we be like Jesus in the boat? Absolutely calm. Could we grow to be like the skipper? He just stands as an example to all and says, yeah, I recognize the winds and the wave. I'm not disputing the facts around me, but I know there's a truth higher. And that is that God is leading me. God is for me. He is my joy. He is my peace. He is my strength. And as long as I'm connected to the truth of God, this storm will not beat me. Could we be those people? Could we set that example for the world around us in these days? I'd love to just pray for you as we close. Father God, I thank you. We thank you for your truth. We thank you that you are a firm foundation, that we will not be shaken in you, God. God, help us to, to seek your truth. Help us to recognize your truth. Help us to grow in your truth. Help us to protect your truth, not just in our lives, but for those around us as well. God, that we may be the ones that are stood in, sec in security in you, Father, knowing that you've got it, that it's all in your hands, God, that we would be a testimony, a light to those around us in this hurting world at this time. God, we thank you that you are with us and that you are for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you so much for watching. We pray to God that you've been impacted by how great God's word is, by how great God's plan is for your life. But I do want to say, if you need prayer for anything, then drop us a line, drop us an email. We would love to hear from you so that we can pray for you and just continue on this journey of building life together. Have a great week, month, year ahead.